Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm sure that many, many of you watched the debate last night between Six Hexenhammer and uh, E. Michael Jones. So before I get into <clears throat> the fact, you know, my reaction to the debate, I do want to say this. I don't have any problem with Catholicism. I don't have any problem with people who are devoutly religious Catholics or, for that matter, almost any religion. Any religion that doesn't encroach on the freedoms of other people, I have no problem with. But when you try to apply the morality of one religion in a society that's built on separation of church and state, you're going to have to use stronger arguments than Google searches and the fact that you seem to tie a thread between uh, various people in the porn industry and how they try to enslave people and student debt and all of that. That's my take. I think you can probably surmise that I didn't come out on the same side as, my, as E. Michael Jones, but I would have loved if the debate had gone longer. It was definitely interesting. It was, it was a little, I guess, um, you know, it was, it was like a gonzo journalism type of event. You had someone who's, you know, he's, he's a senior citizen academic versus a guy who's part of the YouTube alternative universe. And to a certain extent, I th I'd say E. Michael Jones is also part of the alternative universe. So let me start out with the fact that E. Michael Jones tried to make the case that he wanted, that he, he believes that porn is an, is an addictive habit. And I am not going to go into how many times they argued over it. But the fact is that he can't point to an authoritative holding by the American Psychological Association or any other group that can make a determination that it is an addiction. That doesn't mean it's not an addiction. It means that the jury is out until an authoritative determination can take place because we're not talking about a specific substance that the body ingests. We're talking about the behavior that somebody undertakes. It's the same as if you were to say that there's, there's a speed addiction, not speed the drug, like, like people who are speed demons who, who like to, you know, they, they like to do street racing, things like that. People talk about that being an addiction too. Should that be, that already is banned. You're not allowed to race on a public road and yet people do it and people do go to jail for it and it doesn't stop. People still find ways to do it. Uh, doesn't mean that we should legalize it. I'm just trying to set up the whole issue here. So this was the part where I think his whole premise started to fall apart. Libertarians promised the result of the de facto decriminalization of pornography was, as St. Augustine could have predicted, an exponential increase in addiction, which is the modern term for slavery to sin. Predictably, the media outlets under oligarchic control said that addiction to pornography was a myth, reporting on fascinating, rigorous new research. Psychology Today announced that there is no scientific evidence to support the claim that sex addiction, addiction is real. That claim flies in the face of the fact that a Google search of the terms porn and addiction yields 67 million results. So... I, I typed in, this is porn addiction. This is as a term. There's 4.14 million results. What does that mean? Well, let's, let's see what he thinks that means. In November 2019, the young men who were the main victims of this campaign of covert psychological warfare announced a boycott of pornography and the masturbation, which was its inevitable companion in something they called No Nut November. The reaction of the oligarchs who created sexual revolution distract this cohort from the fact that they were hopelessly enslaved to their own passions and student loan debt, debt was swift in coming when Rolling Stone magazine denounced anyone who objected to pornography as anti-Semitic. If the libertarians are interested in promoting freedom, why are they promoting pornography? 
everyone now knows that pornography. So, so this is a straw man argument. We as libertarians don't tell you what to do or not to do. Rolling Stone is not a libertarian magazine. Rolling Stone probably doesn't have a single libertarian on its staff. They have people like Matt Taibbi who would probably be the closest thing, and he's a far left progressive. So this is a complete straw man argument. There's no connection between libertarians and uh, Rolling Stone or any of that. It is literally the most dishonest straw man that you can get, and it only seems to get worse. Pornography leads to addiction, but we now also know that nobody pays for it, eliminating the business angle. So porn isn't really about money either. It's about control. The libertarians are loudly... So th this is another thing where he's, he's uh, if you go to any porn site, and obviously I can't demonstrate this to you because I would get a huge strike on my channel. But if you go to a site, an adult entertainment site, it's not that you're paying for the content. They are showing you ads, you moron. Every single porn site is dependent on ad revenue nowadays. Ad revenue for all sorts of messed up products. In some cases, they're products to try to get you to uh, kick your porn habit. In some cases, they're products that are Probably not, um, you know, they're probably getting into the range of, of performing stuff. Now, if he wants to make the case that those are degenerate products too, be my guest. But there's no way that you can claim that there's the whole issue is independent of making money. These websites make money from ads and they are a burgeoning business and in fact, this is something that's been explained to me by several sociologists. Now, I, I can't cite it here. I, I'll try to find it and put it in the comments. But in many ways, the advance of porn technologically has advanced the technology of the Internet, such that certain things that were once very conventional in terms of the way that you would make money from these things are now kind of the thing of the past, but they're being replaced by other things. And, and one of those things is that instead of people having to pay a membership to a website, you can usually go to some sort of portal, just like you would go to a portal like YouTube, as opposed to you used to, you used to click on a, on a video that would create a, a quick time pop up and you'd have to watch something in, in like super slow speed. That, that's the way you would watch any video. Never mind. I used to watch like baseball highlights that way. That, that was the way the Internet worked in 1996. Okay, is it the same way as it was back then? No, because things change. And the technological illiteracy of someone like E. Michael Jones becomes pretty apparent throughout the entire debate. They proclaim their support of freedom are really interested in promoting addiction because addiction is a form of control which is congenial to the oligarchs who fund think tanks like the Cato Institute to distract the gullible from the fact that they are hopelessly in debt. The moral is clear. Anyone who defends pornography is either what Lenin called a useful idiot or what I call a coke sucker, which is to say a conservative agent of the oligarchs like Charlie Kirk, whose mission is to control and destroy. Okay, now we're going to go to where Sticks replies to him. Scientific study, whatever that means, to tell me whether I have an addiction or not. I don't need that. See that? He says he doesn't need a scientific study to determine whether you have an addiction or not. Addictive or not. And I'm saying, I'm saying I don't need a study, to, a scientific study, whatever that means, to tell me whether I have an addiction or not. I don't need that. That's ridiculous. Are you addicted to... So, so he says that he doesn't need a scientific study to determine whether he's an, he's an addicted to something or not. Porn? Am I? Yeah. No. Then how would you know? So he, he doesn't he's he claims he's not addicted to porn. How would he know? He doesn't have a scientific study. He hasn't experienced this. All he is going on is anecdotal evidence that people are telling him. Now let's hear what he says. How would you know how any of these people are? You don't even know how they feel. You're They're not saying addicted to they it. are. They're telling me that they are. It's not uh, first of all, okay, sixty seven million hits on Google. No relevant member. I show up at at, uh, at an Owen Benjamin Oh, uh, Owen Benjamin is now the, so you're going to an Owen Benjamin lecture, a guy who believes that the moon landing was faked, 
and he yells at people through a screen. And because people walk up to him and tell him that they're addicted to porn, that makes him an authority on porn addiction. Uh, uh, lecture and people come up to me and they're one after the other. They're telling me I'm addicted to porn. It's a big problem. Talk to a, 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 talk, a priest in the confessional uh, tells me the only thing and the main thing he deals with in the confessional is people talking about porn. So it's a problem. So a priest is telling you this. Wow, that's a real reliable source. It's an addiction. Yes or no? What kind of degenerates are you hanging out with that everyone that you know is addicted to porn? I've had not a single person has ever messaged me saying, oh, I'm addicted to porn. You know, well, you know what should I do? It doesn't happen. Well, maybe that's the end of the people you know. I, I have no idea of the type of people you know. I'm just telling you. So, so th this is exactly the issue that E. Michael Jones talks about how people are addicted to porn. And the people who watch E. Michael Jones lectures and use porn come up to him and tell him that they're addicted to porn. There's no real methodology to this. It's all a bunch of people who obviously they want to improve their own lifestyle. Uh, you know, there's certainly ways that and I'm not denying any of these issues that people are bringing up. The neurological connotations of porn uh, usage, uh, a lot of the ways that it desensitizes people. I think that a lot of it is valid observation, but it has not established that porn is some sort of malicious addiction. And most importantly, throughout the entire debate, E. Michael Jones was avoiding Sticks' question he was, he was constantly asking Sticks whether porn is addictive, and Sticks gave an answer, which is that there's no determination yet, which is the same as saying that, you know, if somebody asks you a, a yes or no question and you don't know to say yes or no, what are you supposed to do, lie and pick one? So that was the major flaw in that. That's how many, on your how many people? How many people? <laughs> 67, 67 million 67, 67 million, million people search for something on google again search for me you search for my username or yours and you'll wish you had that many subscribers that's just people looking into the topic so 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 this is e michael jones not knowing how a search engine works so let's say i want to search for uh braveheart right the movie so for Braveheart the movie, there is 19,200,000 results. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there is 19,200,000 people looking for Braveheart. There's just 19,200,000 pages that may reference the movie in some way. It has no, And some of those could be duplicates. Some of them could be archived. Some of them could be sites that are, you know, knockoffs of it or or perhaps or even poor knockoffs of it. Right. Do you know? So these morons who have been going on for months and months about how this guy is some sort of expert on porn, they don't realize that he is tech illiterate and he has these solutions that are built for probably 70 or 80 years ago. And he actually goes into it. Go back to what I said in my opening statement. There was a time when the, the obscenity that was being created by the Jews in Hollywood was kept in line. It was not the government that did it. It was an organization called the Legion of Decency. The Legion of Decency is the one that they imposed the production code on Hollywood in 1934. And then they enforced that by the threat of boycott. OK, that had nothing to do with government. Now, that is an actual historical case that I brought up that could serve as a model. OK, if you want to talk about hypotheticals, I've already dealt with that. So he's talking about commercial boycott as a means of a ban. But I think that if you were one of these groipers who was really interested in what E. Michael Jones is talking about, you might want to look into what the National Legion of Decency was actually about. It was actually also known as the Catholic Legion of Decency. And in fact, a lot of its campaigns actually led to state censorship of movies in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. 
And what ended up happening was that these censorship campaigns, state censorship based on the Fourth Amendment, they led to landmark decisions that started to uh, overturn censorship. And that's really the problem. It's basically these organizations that E. Michael Jones is modeling are the same idea for mothers against, uh, what do you call it, uh, moms demand, demand actions against gun violence or uh, every town for gun safety. All those organizations that always look at the first amendment, they look at the second amendment as some sort of anachronism and they want more gun control and then they ask for more gun control. And then what happens when the law goes to a federal court? Bang, it gets knocked out as if like some sort of uh, skeet shooting contest. That's what they end up doing. That's the problem with moral dictators, whether it's on the First Amendment or the Second Amendment. And it's pretty soon we're going to see the, the same issue with this impeachment, that they're trying to delay a, 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 a speedy trial. That could happen with what's going on with the impeachment because his trial is being delayed. The Donald's trial is being delayed. So anytime people try to abuse the Bill of Rights, it creates a problem because the system was not meant to adhere to the uh, doctrines of moral bullies. That's not the way that the Constitution was written. Obviously, it's not a perfect Constitution, but there's ways that it guards against the abuse of these crusading morons. Um, and th there's a couple cases that the Legion of Decency actually drove to the Supreme Court, and one of them was the Miracle Case, which was Joseph Burston Incorporated versus Wilson of 1952, and it says, the First Amendment protects motion pictures because they are a form of expression through art. And lo and behold, it says, provisions of the New York Education Law, which forbid the commercial showing of any motion picture film without a license and authorized denial of a license on the censor's conclusion that a film is sacrilegious held void as a prior restraint on freedom of speech and the press under the first amendment made applicable to the states by the 14th amendment and what was what was the law that what was the film that they were talking about the film the film my friends was called the miracle right uh this was a film that uh, it had to do with this, you know, basically this film that was Italian called uh, Le Amore. And it was, I guess, sacrilegious to the Catholic Church. So this has very little to do with pornography. It has to do with blasphemy. These organizations are about blasphemy against the Catholic Church, which, with all due respect, I, again, I work with Catholics. I've always had great relationships with Catholics. I have no problem. You know, I was just at a ceremony uh, for the Hanukkah lighting, like about 20 feet away. There was the nativity scene. Nobody cared. It's fine because we live in a country where people can be free to believe whatever they want. The difference is that you can't go and say, well, you know, your film is kind of uh, cramping our style, so you can't show it in theaters. It was the same problem that was with Passion of the Christ. Then there was Jews who were trying to get the Passion of the Christ not shown in theaters. And what happened? It became a massive hit because people wanted to see it. And also because it was a good film. I saw the film. I didn't see the whole film. You know, honestly, I'm not that interested in it. But <laughs> but it was. I mean, it looked pretty well made. I have, I mean, I, I doubt Mel Gibson likes me, but I think he's a great filmmaker. Two separate things, right? <laughs> quality of film, quality of the person, two different issues. So people have to sell, they have to separate the art from the artist and they have to se separate their preferences from, a, from the law and custom of a free society. And that's what E. Michael Jones can't seem to do. That's, I have no problem with that. That's not a law. That's not a porn ban. That's just threatening boycott. Dude, the left does that all the time to anyone that enables people like us to speak. Why do you think we're on DLive right now instead of YouTube? Why are, why are we here instead of a site with 100 times the audience? So have, we, have we resolved this issue then? That was the model. The Catholics 
basically kept the Jews in line for 31 years without any interference from government. You want to start a boycott, go ahead. But that has nothing to do with banning porn, which is what we're debating. So, so Sticks wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to know that what E. Michael Jones was talking about was actually you would have these organizations that would picket theaters and then they would petition their local or state government and the state government would step in and say, hey, we can't show this film. So th this is a list of these films that, OK, this is from IMDb and these were films that were condemned by the Legion of Decency. And uh, it goes from 1933 all the way to 1978. So some of them are, you know, I guess some of them are a little lurid. But, um, you know, for example, this one, she done me wrong. In the gay 90s, so gay 90s was back in the 1890s. It has nothing to do with, like, a bunch of homos. It has to do with, uh, you know, these, these swinging nightclubs. It says, a seductive nightclub singer contends with several suitors, including a jealous escaped convict, and a handsome temperance league member. So they were censoring a comedy. Do we know that there was any sort of explicit pornography in it? From what I know, there wasn't. Um, let's see here. So we have um, Madame du Barry is a 1934 American historical film directed by William Dieterle and starring Dolores Del Rio, Reginald Owen. So... It looks like this might be like some sort of interracial stuff. So so it is censorship. It has nothing to do with pornography. It's literally censorship. OK, now you could say you don't want to see that type of thing. But does that mean that there is a no First Amendment right to portray it? No. Um, this one, this thing called love. Two professional people marry, but the wife insists that they be celibate for the first three months just to see if they are truly compatible the husband tries various tricks to lure his um, his wife into bed, but she trumps his every serve. Finally, when she is ready for love, he isn't having contracted a, bast a bad case of poison oak. So, so they're censoring these films because they're not really chaste enough for the Catholic Church. It has nothing to do with pornography. Uh, I mean, this is th I mean, this this could be a little risque here. Uh, the outlaw, <laughs> yeah. So some some of it is just like these skimpy, skimpily dressed ladies. Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street, uh, believe it or not. What? So the original Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street, which is a Christmas classic, was apparently condemned by the Legion of Decency. So yes, if you are out there and you're supporting Legion of Decency, yes, you believe in censorship. And and look, the fact is that he's being disingenuous and he is somebody who believes in censorship. It's just as simple as... We're saying, I am addicted. What more evidence do you need? There are plenty of people that are addicted to all sorts of... There are plenty of video game addicts out there. Let's ban them. It's har it's harming society. Yeah, Fuck video shifting. games. Keep Fuck rock music. You keep, you keep shifting the discussion away from what we're supposed to be talking about. I didn't come on to talk about video games. I didn't come on to talk about government. I didn't come off to talk about drugs. I came on to talk about pornography, and you refuse to talk about it. You can't make even the most fundamental yes or no statement about it. You, right. you haven't given me any reason to answer the question because you have oh, not yes, supplied have. any oh, actual yes, evidence. Oh, yes, I have. Please remind me of when you have. Earlier in the discussion. Yeah, Thomas Aquinas, uh, Augustine. You have, okay. a, you have a problem with Thomas Aquinas? You seem obsessed with uh, Catholic saints. No, I have a problem with the idea of people that died centuries ago in forming modern policy that involves the Internet. Uh, I, I have a feeling that most people agree with me on that. I think you think that there's some sort of army against porn because of the number of <laughs> Google searches. I mean, come on, dude. All right. Um, now, Gator, I think. OK, so so again, I, I like that sticks twists the knife on that. This guy doesn't know how Google works. He doesn't know how the Internet works. He thinks that the more results that come out, the more people are actually talking about porn addiction. He doesn't know what the hell the Internet is about. Right. I think you had a question uh, for sticks or you can ask the Jones question, either one. Uh, I figure w maybe we'll ask a question or two to kind of uh, break up the log jam here. Uh, so go ahead, Gator. OK, this uh, this first question is for sticks. Uh, we had a guest on our program, Vince James of Red Elephants, and he argued 
and showed studies that pornography is damaging to the developing brains of children. Okay. He then proposed an implementation of a national ID verification system to prevent those children from being able to access pornography online. Would you support such a system? Why or why not? It's a better idea than a blanket ban, but the problem the problem with creating such a system is that it negatively impacts... So, so here, he's asked the question and he's giving a very cogent and well-thought-out answer. That's ...the structure of the internet would wipe out internet anonymity. If it were able to be implemented pragmatically, yeah, that'd be a good idea. I think that preferably we wouldn't even be having this argument if parents would step up, teachers would step up, and, and arguably religious communities too, Mr. Jones step up and try to shelter children from such content so that big uh, big brother government doesn't have to get involved in the first place because it won't work anyway. The government ban, if it were to implement it, would be misused. Absolutely. Guaranteed. And that's really the problem. All right. Now, Dr. Jones, um, you know, it is about the issue of pornography, but I guess what would be in your... Um you know, if you were dictator or whatever, could you could just snap your fingers and, and do whatever you wanted uh, with the pornography issue. Uh, what would be your ideal outcome uh, as we move forward talking about these sorts of issues? I would ban it. All right. Now, um, since we... So, so there you go. I mean, no explanation, no implementation, no theory, no plan, nothing. I, I would just ban it, right? That, that, was, that was the guy. I'm going to ban it. Right. You're, you're going to ban something. You, you can't figure out how you're going to do it. You can't figure out the actual issue and how to to measure it. Right. You can't figure out how to measure how much porn addiction there is because you don't know how to bit. You, first of all, you don't have qu qualified studies to point to. And then when people ask you if you do, you basically say, oh, um, I don't need the studies because people tell me they're addicted. Right. Uh, I mean, if people walked up to you and told, told you they're possessed by the devil, would that substantiate it? Because there's plenty of people. I go downtown and people tell me that all the time. That doesn't mean that they're possessed by Satan. And you had another question for Dr. Jones. I did. So Roth versus United States 1957 established the Roth test, which states that obscenity is content that is, quote, utterly without redeeming social importance to an average person and was not covered under the First Amendment. Then, Miller versus California in 1973 established the three-prong Miller test, which states that a content is considered obscene if the average person applying contemporary community standards would find the work as a whole obscene. Story Decisis holds that the future court will defer to the actions of prior courts. Between these two cases, we've seen a change in the value of the average American person. If American values have changed to the point that an average person no longer considers pornography to necessarily be obscene, how would you petition the Supreme Court to overrule its decision in Miller to ban pornography? Uh, I would not petition the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has shown itself to be worthless in dealing with this issue. They, they should have left it at the Roth decision. Pornography is not free speech. It was never considered free speech. What you're talking about here is basically the subversion of uh, the, 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 the social fabric, the unraveling of the social fabric during this period of uh, cultural revolution. So the Supreme Court uh, failed. It failed to protect the social order. And so I don't see me going to the Supreme Court and asking them not to fail again. OK, it, they failed. It's not to say they couldn't restore this. Something, some group could not restore it in the future, but the Supreme Court has failed. They failed, and there's no point in getting into the quibbling there. It's, I, I'm not, that's not what I'm here to do, okay? We're here to talk about pornography. It should not be covered as free speech. It has been empirically shown to be uh, deleterious and problematic, and therefore we need to ban it. That's not the job of the Supreme Court. Right. So he's trying to attribute values that he believes in that have nothing to do with what the Supreme Court is about. And, and look, there's a number of decisions with the Supreme Court that I disagree with. Uh, what was it? Lawrence versus Texas. I don't really agree with. Uh, what's the other one? Um, the you know, there's there's plenty there's plenty of goddamn cases that you could point at. Right. Uh, Obergefell. I don't really, I don't believe in gay marriage either. I think it, I, I disagree with sticks on that. 
I think gay marriage is a huge joke, right? I think it's the dumbest thing ever. It doesn't make any sense to me, right? But the Supreme Court ruled on it because they found a constitutional contradiction with it. Therefore, if I want the law changed, I have to go back to the Supreme Court. Otherwise, I'm basically saying, well, I don't agree with the decision. I want to change it. Where, where do you go now, Mike, uh, Michael Jones? I was going to look this up. This is a really funny part. Um, I have some more, too, but um, Dr. Jones, you can go ahead with one if you'd like. Yeah, wh wh uh, what kind of name is Hexenhammer? It comes from the Malleus Maleficarum. It's the, the uh, German equivalent, uh, famous witch hunting guide, Burning so Times. Is that your real name? No, my name is obviously not Hexenhammer, but that'd be cool. Well, why, why are you not giving us your real name? You've got my real name. It's all over the internet. Uh, I don't know what it is. I put it on all my books. Look, look, look dude, Occult Memetics. You should get a copy. I'll sign one for you, and you give me a signed copy of one of your books. Why are you not using your real name? What relevance does it have to the porn debate? I'm, just, I'm, a, I'm asking a question. Just give me an answer. Uh, I've used this moniker since 2008, so it's kind of an old habits are die you hard. Afraid? Are you afraid to use your real name? No. Why? Okay, just asking. I have, so I don't really believe in the cult so much, but I do watch Styx's channel and I do listen to the cult um, topics because some of them are kind of interesting. And he also talks about folklore. So it actually has his name on one of his books that I did buy about Scottish folklore because I do like the folk traditions of Scotland and, and Ireland and everything. And it's, it has his name, Tarl Warwick. And all you would have to, had to do if you were E. Michael Jones and you're this great researcher and you can just find shit out and you're so good at figuring things out and looking into the past and finding things that are really difficult and researching and things like that, is you would just go to Sticks Hex and Hammer. Here, we'll, we'll do it right now because he used the Google machine, right? So he goes to – so it actually has his name. I, I doubt that he would really – uh, it has, I mean, look, he even has a website that's not, it just says tarwarwig.net. It has his stupid picture here and everything, and it has his merchandise. Now, look, I personally, I don't donate to anyone that, well, I do, do donate to some creators. I don't donate to Sticks. The only thing I've ever done is I've bought a few of his interesting books because I think that's really, I think that's a little bit more of what I'm interested in sometimes you know, stuff that people write, and I, I never really reviewed it, but I think we'll leave it here. Uh, the bottom line is that you cannot legislate morality, and when he said, uh, oh, well, I guess we're not going to leave it here. When he said, oh, well, we're just going to ban it, this is from Saudi Arabia, Saudi Gazette, 76% of cyber crimes in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia involve porn pornography, which, by the way, is illegal. Possessing pornography on a laptop or any sort of electronic device or in any form is illegal in Saudi Arabia. And yet 76% of cyber crimes involve pornography in Saudi Arabia. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of this does involve children, according to this article, which, which is wholly condemnable. I don't care what type of libertarian you are. If you believe in uh, pedophilia, I don't think I want to belong in the same group as you. Um, the, the, the spokesperson says, so this guy is named uh, Abdulaziz al-Jawhar, and he says, um, he says 75% of victims of electronic crimes are children and young people between 10 and 16 years. 18% of the children are exposed to harassment online, and 66% suffered cyber abuse accidentally, while 44% watched the videos intentionally. Okay, in Saudi Arabia, a country where porn is banned and they have a, a very sophisticated proxy internet, 44% watched porn intentionally, and 18% used the internet for sexual activity. He also said 10% of Saudi children between the ages of 12 and 13 are addicted to pornography. So censorship, uh, you know, maybe it would have been higher if there was no ban. But apparently it hasn't worked in Saudi Arabia of all countries. And in here, this is from the French web website RFI. It says, the French court rules against French company in Saudi royal family porn film case. A French court has rejected a lawsuit filed by a French company reclaiming money for porn films allegedly commissioned by the late Saudi prince 
Saud al-Faisal. They ruled that email exchanges were insufficient proof of a contract. So these people who impose this draconic system, is it a draconian system of, of law against the, their citizens in order to, to uh, create some sort of sexually pure in society, they themselves are trying to get porn films made, which is exactly what would happen. E. Michael Jones might think that he can impose a moral solution on humanity, but he's not going to succeed. That's about it. Uh, Sticks will probably have some sort of video on this today also. So, you know, obviously, if you want to hear his version, you can go ahead. I, I don't know if you might. I think A. Michael Jones does have a BitChute channel, but I'm not sure about YouTube. So please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I will put as many links as I can in the description. Uh, can't guarantee all of it. Uh, also find me on BitChuteMinds.com and subscribe star if you want to donate to me. And those are all at Chef Leopard for my uh, handle. And you can also find me on Gab at Starscream85.